Hi there, it's Luke here again for the M5 Stack official channel. We've been looking at how to program games on the Core 2. The last week we saw the smiley face game. This week we can make games such as this. The classic noughts and crosses, or tic-tac-toe as it's also known. The simple challenge of getting three in a row of noughts or crosses. Let's see how we can go about programming it. Today's tutorial is going to be a little bit of a hybrid. We'll start in UI flow first to make sure we get all of our UI elements set up in a nice and easy way. So first I'm going to start off by creating the grid. I'll be using the line elements here and all I need to do is to change the X and Y coordinates of the start point and end point. Of course if we divide the 240 pixels height of the screen we split the screen into 80. So our first one will be 80 but because the line is one pixel thickness we'll offset the other ones a little bit. And we'll repeat this for the second horizontal line changing the coordinates. And now we're done with the horizontal lines we'll switch to the vertical ones. So the width of the screen is 320 pixels. So I'll go with 106 to have more or less the correct coordinate. And then we set the length to be 240. And we'll repeat this for the remaining line. So now I have my grid done, I'm going to move on to buttons. In the previous lesson we used touch coordinates but since we only need certain areas, I'll use buttons instead as it's a simpler way of detecting the press. So I'm going to set all of the buttons with a width of 100 and a height of 70 and then just sort of place them within the grid so they fit nicely in there. Of course, if you're too lazy to do this, I'll be placing the Python code in the GitHub in the description of this video so you can have the coordinates in there already. So we'll repeat that process until all the buttons are done. I'm sure you'd agree this is a much quicker and nicer way of setting up a UI interface rather than having to type lines with the coordinates in. And the final UI element we'll need is a label to tell us who has won the game. Now to coding. First of all we want to drag a hide block and we'll show it later when someone has won the game. And then we want to go into the button section in UI and basically grab a bunch of these touch button was pressed. And then we'll duplicate them for all of the nine buttons. We'll also have to change the number of each of these button blocks so it correlates to the correct button. Next we'll create a variable which I'm going to call turns. This will dictate whether it's the turn of the noughts or turn of the crosses depending on if the number is odd or even. And of course we'll set it to zero on start. We'll next create another variable which I'll call noughts or cross which will hold a string including a note or a cross. But for the moment we'll leave it blank. Now we're going to create a bunch of functions. The first being a way to check whose turn it is. So I'll create this function and call it check and then in here we're going to use a bunch of logic to check whether turns is a odd number or an even number and of course if it's greater than zero. So first I'll set this turns more than zero block then I'll use an and block and then from the maths I'll add in a is even block and put the turns in there. And in this first if condition, I'll make sure that not so cross is set to x. Then the next part, we simply need to add in an else if condition and add from the maths block a is even block, which we'll then put our turns variable into. And finally, in this section, we'll set not so cross to not. And later we're going to use this variable to display the text onto the buttons. And now to start to implement this functionality, we'll add this check function to each of these touch button blocks. 
and then from the button block section we'll take the set touch button text and we'll use that variable that we created the notes or crosses variable and fill it in there and duplicate it for all of the touch button blocks and the last block that we need to add into these touch button functions is the variable block to change the turns or increase turns by one and now I'll just give these blocks a bit of a tidy up and add that block in that I accidentally deleted and now we're going to create another function. The purpose of this function, which I'll call clear, is simply to clear the text of each of the touch button blocks so we can start a new game. So I'll grab a bunch of these touch button set text and set it to blank and duplicate a bunch of these for each of the touch button blocks. Two other functions that we're going to need if we want to display whether notes or crosses of one is a note win and cross win function. So I'll create the note win first and then just duplicate it. Inside this function, we need to set the label to show, then set the label text to display note wins. Then we'll have a little bit of a delay so there's time for the player to see who's won. I'll give it about two seconds and then we make sure that the label is hidden again. And then since it, it's a win, we'll use that clear block to reset the game board. So then I'll just duplicate this note wins and then change the information for crosses team. And now comes the point where it gets a little bit tricky or overcomplicated to do this in UI Flow. So the method I'll use to check if uh, three in a row has happened is to use a certain function which will check the text content of each of the buttons. But unfortunately it doesn't exist in UI Flow. So let's go over to MicroPython now. So here I am editing the MicroPython in Moo. We can have a quick look over our code to see if there's any errors that have been generated. It seems okay here. I'll just empty this while loop. And now I can enter the REPL on the device and check the functions of this touch button object. We can see here some of the functions that have been mapped to blocks in UI Flow, but there is one that is not, which is button text. So I can use the touch button text function in this manner to check if a row of buttons have the same text. For instance, if touch button zero is equal to naught and button one and button two are also equal to naught. And like this, using this grid as assistance, I can go through all of the possible outcomes where naught could win. And then for X, I can simply copy that and then change the values to X. And that's pretty much it. I did try to implement this functionality in UI Flow using the execute blocks, but it seemed to cause the app to crash each time. I'll keep working on it, and if I manage to get successful creating this game in UI Flow, I'll place the M5F file also in the GitHub linked in the description. And that's about all we have time for in our video today. I hope you enjoy programming this game. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave them down in the comments. As always, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.